In this video, I'll help you decode another portion of the neurological examination, this time the sensory exam. Don't turn away, because that learning starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's video is the third installment in a series dedicated to decoding the neuro exam. Today, I'm gonna to be focusing on the sensory examination. Many portions of the nervous system are set up like wires. And when your foot is touched, there's literally a series of wires that sends that information from the foot to the nerve, up the spinal cord, into your brain, where it's interpreted as, hey, my foot's being touched. And if we get slightly more granular, there are two major sensory systems giving us information about sensations that the body experiences. One set of information has to deal with light touch, joint position, and vibration sensation. There's a separate pathway for pain and temperature. And as you'll see during this exam, we test both pathways to have a most comprehensive understanding of that individual's ability to sense information. My wonderful MA Amber has been kind enough to allow me to video when I did a full neuro exam on her. And we're gonna be reviewing some footage from that right now. Here, you see me testing light touch. I'll touch the left hand and the right hand, and I'm asking if there are differences between the two. I'll do the same things in the feet. This next test involves using a tuning fork, which makes a vibrating sensation. I hold the tuning fork on the distal limb, so on the great toe or on the thumb, and I'm feeling the vibration with my fingers at the same time that Amber is feeling the vibration on her foot. She is instructed to tell me when she stops feeling it. And when she says, now, I'm determining whether I can still feel it. I deem my sensation as being normal. So if I can still feel it and she can't, there's a deficit. Now, one of the ways that we try to quantify this is literally by counting. So if I've got the tuning fork on her hand or on her foot, and she says, I can't feel it, but I can still feel it, I start counting 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, to determine the discrepancy between when her sensation stopped and mine stopped. And we'll oftentimes record vibration impaired three seconds after the examiner. It's a way of quantifying that this person has deficits and to what degree. These next set of tests study joint position. And we do that by holding on to the joint and moving it a very small amount. The person with their eyes closed then tells me whether we move the joint up or down. And this is done in all the distal extremities. Here, I'm testing temperature. And I accomplish this by actually holding the tuning fork against uh, the skin. The tuning fork's made of metal and it's typically cool to the touch. And so I take advantage of that to test temperature in the face, arms, and legs. This next test is one of my favorites, again, because it's a functional test. When you're standing up, there are in fact three sensory systems that keep you upright. They're constantly giving your body feedback about where you are in space so that your muscles can stay active in the right ways and you don't fall over. Those three sensory systems are, number one, the visual information going back to the cerebellum, which helps you kind of stay uh, coordinated in space. The second one is the inner ear gyroscope that tells you where your head is in space. And the third one is joint position mostly in your ankles and in your feet. It turns out that you need two of the three systems operational to stay standing. And so the Romberg test starts with a person standing at attention with eyes open. Theoretically, all three systems are on. Then we have the person close their eyes, as you see Amber doing here. When your eyes are closed, you turn off the visual cerebellar input. And so you're only using two systems, the joint position in your feet and the inner ear. If one of those two systems is not working and you close your eyes, you're going to fall. Now this screening neurological test has to then be followed up with further testing to clarify which systems are wrong. But it's an outstanding functional screening test looking at multiple different forms of sensation. Again, it's called the Romberg test. Lastly, there's a tremendous amount of sensory information that can be learned by watching someone walk. 
If you can't feel your feet, it clearly impacts the way that you ambulate, and we can determine that by watching your gait exam. There you have it, folks. A quick review of the sensory examination in an attempt to decode and demystify the neuro exam. Sensation is important and oftentimes can be frustrating for patients to explain to clinicians. These tests help clarify and quantify exactly which systems are wrong and where they're wrong. My name is Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if so, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Until my next video, take care.